One of the things we have to consider when we're using test equipment to probe around in an operating circuit is the effect our equipment has on the parameters of the circuit. And if we're using the oscilloscope, we really want to try to use a times 10 probe if we can. The voltage levels are where we can because this is an example of what we actually inject into the circuit. I have a standard scope probe here and I'm just connected with my capacitance meter between ground and the tip in the times one position and I have 105 picofarads of capacitance that I would inject in the circuit. Let's change it to times 10. This one's switchable and it changes to 17 picofarads. So even the 17 picofarads is enough to bother things like our bandpass filters or oscillator frequency determining networks. So we really want to watch and pick our test points carefully to make sure that the capacitance we're inserting in it when we touch with the scope probe doesn't change the operation of the circuit. We're going to troubleshoot slash align our bit X in a systematic process and it's much easier to start with a transmitter because usually the levels are bigger and they're easier to uh, set up a standard reference. So the first place we'll look is work from the microphone in out towards the power amps. The first place to look is a nice easy place to look is down here on the beat frequency oscillator and we're going to take and hook the scope right on the top end of R67. That's the output of the BFO going down to the uh, balance modulator transformer. So if we look there we should see something somewhere around 11 megahertz. The top end of R67 is the point we want to hook onto so you can see we have the scope probe clipped onto that. Let's take a look and see what the waveforms looks like. Just a little note here on all these oscilloscope settings down here at the bottom is the sweep speed setting in this case 100 nanoseconds and up at the top here is the vertical sensitivity setting so in this case we have 500 millivolts per division and we have A loose connection on the scope probe looks like. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five divisions, so we've got about two and a half volts there. And we could take a look and calculate out the the frequency. and you can see it's just a little less than two divisions at 50 nanoseconds so it's going to be just a little less than 100 nanoseconds so it'll be a little more than 10 megahertz or our 11 megahertz that we were looking for so we have five divisions two and a half volts of 11 megahertz there next place to check is with a signal input. Since this is signal sideband, if you don't have a signal input, you won't get any output when things are tuned properly anyway. So we're going to run 50 millivolts into the mic jack. That's a little hot for normal use. You probably, from the testing I was doing, you're better off down around the 25 millivolt level as a maximum mic input. But with the 50, we get a little better signal levels that we can look at as we go through these stages so it makes it a little easier to work with. So I've got 50 millivolts at 1 kilohertz. I've got it hooked to the mic jack and remember if you have the DC resistor in for an electret mic if you put R82 in 
you need to use a blocking capacitor here. So we're all set to check the output of the microphone stage. Easiest place to check is the out, the output of the microphone stage is actually on the top of R77 which is through an additional 10 microfarad capacitor going into the audio output amplifier section but you can clip onto the top of R77 real easily and this is the waveform you should see. Looks kind of nasty but remember what's happening as we have 11 megahertz also hooked to this transformer so what we're seeing with all the fuzz is the 11 megahertz riding in on our input signal. You could take and remove the oscillator and stop that and then we should have a clean looking signal here. You can do that that's probably the easiest by just pulling the crystal out. I cheated when I built mine and I put the crystal in a socket so that's real easy. Later on after I'm all done testing and playing with the circuitry I'll remove the two pins and solder the crystal in permanent. Now that we've got rid of the BFO signal we can see the microphone amp output real well We've got four divisions at almost at 100 millivolts, or almost four divisions of the 100 millivolts. Remember, we put 50 millivolts in, so we're getting about 400 millivolts out. So we get a voltage gain of about eight. So that's about right for this stage. If we do the calculations, that's what it should be. So the microphone stage is working okay, and the beat frequency oscillator stage is working okay. We've plugged the crystal back in so you can see the difference it makes when it's out of the circuit. Okay, we verified the voltage come out up from our mic amplifier. We actually checked it right here, but it's coming up this way. It's going into one one section of the modulation transformer. The beat frequency oscillator signal is coming down here. We actually checked it right here on the top of this resistor. So those are being mixed together in the ballast modulator and what the ballast modulator is going to do is generate new frequencies and that being as a ballast modulator it's going to reject the carrier. So coming out of the balance modulator section here I should have upper and lower sideband which are going to be determined by the beat frequency oscillator frequency plus the modulation frequency will be the upper sideband. The beat frequency minus the modulation frequency will be the lower sideband and the balance part of it means it's going to attenuate the carrier. So we at this point here we should be able to see upper sideband, lower sideband and carrier but we need to be able to adjust this to reject the carrier. When this is set to where I have equal amounts of carrier in the positive direction coming from this side and carrier in a negative direction come from this side, they'll be 180 out of phase and they'll cancel each other out when this is adjusted exactly to the middle. So we're going to adjust that by looking further over here because if I come and stick the scope probe in this section here I'm going to detune the circuit plus over here it's gone to an amplifier section and it'll be a bigger signal so we're going to take a look right in this area here and see what the signal looks like. I'm going to connect right to the junction of C62 and C89 that's right where it goes to the input of the crystal filter. So that's a pretty easy place to find. 
this is another place where I had sockets installed so I could pull these capacitors out and isolate the sections but uh, if you hook on either side of the capacitors any one, one of those two they're all connected together and the signal will feed through no matter how you hook on them okay here's our signal what we're seeing is the carrier that's being fed through now if you ha have it balanced this, this is what you should see if you have the pot adjusted all the way to one side because it's unbalanced and as I adjust the pot as I go through the center it feeds equal portion of carrier in opposite phase to the center tap of the pot and if I keep going I'll get it on the other side so the best way to start is put it on one side or the other just all the way clockwise or counterclockwise and then what you want to adjust for and you notice here we're running at 50 millivolts per division you want to adjust this for minimum output we have no modulation at this time there's no we've removed the modulation voltage so the only thing that's coming through the balance modulator is carrier we want the carrier to be close to zero as we can adjust it, adjust it so if you can take and adjust it from one limit of the pot have it decrease go through a low value then come back up to a maximum everything's working right and th in my case I'm getting about a hundred millivolts it looks like out with it unbalanced and I can adjust it down to that point if you see right here watch these little center parts instead of the spikes if we adjust that for a minimum amplitude there that should be balanced and in my case let's take a look at what the pot where the pot set see in my case right now the pot set to where it's pointing this way it's right in the center position that's about the way it should be if you can't get it to center and you're adjusted all the way to one end or the other with it probably the cause for that would be the mixer diodes weren't, weren't matched real well and at this point about all you could do is get some, a couple more to try it once again I've mounted my mixer diodes and plug-ins so that I can select them and when I was trying to balance mine out I did that selection and I selected until I got some that would balance out relatively easy and give me the best carrier rejection the other thing which I didn't mention we'll go back to the scope one but this capacitor is a phasing capacitor so we can adjust that at the same time and its effect is less than balance pot but between the two you should be able to set it so you get almost no voltage out here I'm adjusting the the capacitor so you just try to adjust it for minimum and we're going to adjust the pot for minimum and just if you can get the right action of it that's all you need at this point because it'll be far easier to set later on back when we look at the carrier output out of the PA because the power will be a lot bigger there and be more sensitive for adjustment. I sat alone in my room Too rude to even cry So doggone tired of living I could lay right down and die Oh, don't blame me for what I do, baby. For the cause of it all.